An NPN transistor connected in such a way behaves as an amplifier, but it doesn't always amplify. There are certain conditions for that, right? So in this example, we'll explore this in great detail. We'll understand under what conditions our transistor acts as an amplifier and under what condition it doesn't. So we'll explore the complete behavior of a transistor in this video. Now, I think the best way to understand these behaviors is to look at a practical circuit. And the difference between this circuit and a practical one is that a real circuit would have some resistors over here. We include the resistors to limit the current so that the current won't increase a lot and our transistors won't blow up. And so, let me introduce a resistor over here in this, uh, in this wire over here. And I'm also going to replace this schematic figure with... Uh, the circuit symbol of a transistor. So let's quickly do that. So let me bring in the circuit symbol of our transistor. So remember, this is the emitter, this part resembles the base, and this would be the collector. The arrow mark tells us what direction the emitter base current flows in. So we can get rid of this schematic now, over here. And instead of directly connecting the collector to the five volt supply, let's introduce a resistor in between. And I'm also going to change the supply voltage. Instead of making it five volt, let me do it, let me make it three volts. It's only so that it's gonna become easier for the numbers that I've chosen for this particular example. Now, what this resistor does is that notice because of the addition of this resistance, when there is a current flowing, IC is flowing over here, there's going to be a difference in the potential between this point and this point. So the voltage at this point is no longer going to be three volts at, at all times. It will depend on this current. And so what we have done by adding that resistor is that our VCE is no longer this point, this voltage. Our VCE, our output, is now this voltage, this point. This is going to be our VCE. And that is going to be our output voltage. All right, now we're going to start playing with this supply voltage and see how the circuit starts behaving. The first case we're going to talk about first case is when this voltage VBE, VBE is less than 0.7 volt. Now in reality, there's going to be another resistor over here as well, but that's not going to affect our understanding. So I've, I've just neglected that resistance. All right, so if VBE is less than 0.7 volt, what's going to happen? Well, we've already seen that before in input characteristics, that if this voltage is less than 0.7 volt, then the base emitter is not properly forward biased. And as a result, if we go back to our schematic, this depletion region doesn't reduce, electrons get hardly injected into the base, and as a result, the base current is almost zero. And since hardly any electrons are getting injected, hardly any electrons are getting collected as well, and so even the collector current goes to zero. So let's write that down. So over here, the base current is pretty much zero. It's approximately zero. It's very, it's very tiny, which can be approximate to be zero. And even the collector current is approximately zero. Now notice, as a result, because the collector current is zero, there is no voltage drop over here because Ohm's law. No current means no voltage drop, no potential difference. Therefore, this voltage now is going to be exactly the same as this voltage. And therefore, VCE is going to be three volts. So in this case, VCE is going to be plus three volts. And we will see that this is the maximum voltage ever possible, okay? Now this is the behavior in which notice our transistor is not conducting any current. There are no currents at all. And this behavior of a transistor or this state of a transistor is called the cutoff state of the transistor. So we say our transistor is in cutoff. So notice in cutoff, our output current is zero but our output voltage is maximum. All right, our next possibility is this VBE, VBE is more than or equal to 0.7 volt. Now we've seen that once you hit that 0.7 volt, the depletion region vanishes, and after that, even for tiny changes in the voltages, the current was going to change a lot. So for large ranges of the input current, the IB value, the pre voltage pretty much stays at 0.7 volt. And it's for that reason, we're going to pretty much assume that this voltage is not going to increase more than 0.7 volt. So we're gonna approximate the second case as VB is approximately 0.7 volt. What's going to happen in this case? Well, let's explore. To do that, let's give some value for this resistance. Let's say that resistance is one kilo ohm. One kilo ohm. All right, let's look at some different scenarios. 
Now there's going to be some current, considerable current over here. Let's say the current over here is, I don't know, about 10 microamperes to keep numbers very simple. What will happen over here? Well, we've already seen that the output current, once the transistor starts conducting, our output current is going to be the amplified version of the input current. Let's say the amplification factor is 100. We call that as current gain, beta. Let's say that beta value for our transistor is 100. It, this just means that the output current is 100 times more than the input current. So our output current is going to be 1,000 microamperes, 100 times more, or a milliampere. Let me just write that down. So in this example, it's going to be a milliampere. All right, now think about this. Because this current is a milliampere, one milliampere flowing, there's going to be some voltage drop across this. Can you see that? And we can calculate that voltage drop using Ohm's law. That voltage drop V equals IR. So how much voltage drop comes over here? Well, I is one milli, R is one kilo. So if you multiply, the milli and the kilo cancel, and so the voltage drop becomes one volt. So there's a voltage drop of one volt here. And as a result, notice, out of three volts that is supplied, one volt gets dropped here. That means our output remaining now becomes two volts. So this would become two volts. So you can see the effect of an input current. The output current increased because initially it was zero, but now notice the output voltage decreased. This is now working as an amplifier because the output current is amplified version of the input current. All right, now let's increase this voltage just a little bit more, and let's say as a result, the current changes to 20 microamperes. Well, what will happen to the output current? Well, output current will be 100 times more than this, so output current will be two milliamperes. Now, I want you to pause the video and calculate what will the output voltage be. All right, let's see. Well, since this is now two milliamperes, the potential drop over here would be two volts, Ohm's law. So this would be two volts. And notice, as a result, the voltage over here, well, this is three, you lost two, and as a result, the output voltage becomes one volt. One volt. It's still acting like an amplifier. Good for us. But what if we increase this voltage even further, and let's say the current now goes to 30 microamperes. I'm pretty sure you can do your calculations now. This would be 100 times more, so that would be three milliamperes. Three milliamperes, oops three milliamperes, this as a result would become three volts. It has to be, right? Because one kilo ohm, three volts. And as a result, notice now the output voltage has become zero volt. And this is a critical state for our transistor, as we'll see, zero volt. It's still acting like an amplifier, but it's barely acting like an amplifier. Let's see why. If we were to increase this current even further, let's say we got it to 40 microamperes as an example, then what will happen to the output current? Will it be four milliamperes? It seems like that, but it can't be. And the reason it can't be four milliamperes is because then this voltage drop would be four volts. But that can't be because the supply voltage itself is three volts. You cannot have a drop more than three volts. So what will happen? Well, the output current will not increase anymore. It's gonna stay at three milliamperes. So even if you increase the current beyond this, the output current is just gonna stay three milliamperes. This is the critical state. You cannot possibly get more than three milliamperes output current over here. I hope that makes sense. So as a result, we have now two conditions when VB has hit 0.7 volt. So let me write that those two conditions. All right, so let's say the first case in this I'm gonna call that as case number two because first case is already written over here. In this, the first case would be IB, when IB is above zero, so IB is above zero, but below 30 microamperes, let's say, below or equal to whatever, okay, 30 microamperes. In this region, our, amp our transistor works as an amplifier. In this region, we could say IC equals beta times IB, that's what we found, right? 100 times IB, and our output voltage, our output voltage, that is VCE, that was swinging between zero volts and three volts. We saw that over here, right? This is the region where the output current is linearly changing with the input current, notice? And therefore, this region is called as the linear state of our transistor, or the linear region of our transistor. It's also called as the active region because transistor is it's acting like an amplifier. It's behaving like it's supposed to do. We would say the transistor is active. But there's another possibility, that I'm gonna write that over here, there's another possibility, 
And then this possibility, what happens is, I mean, this happens when IB goes beyond 30 microamperes. Beyond 30 microamperes. This is when our output current has been saturated. Our output current now, IC, cannot go about 30 micro, 30 million, three, sorry, three milliamperes. It is now become maximum, three milliamperes. It has become maximum. So even if you had to increase that current to, I don't know, maybe 40 microamperes, if you had to increase to 40, 50, 60, whatever you do, our output current will not go, just not go beyond this point. And our voltage now, the output voltage has gone to zero or it has become minimum. This state where the output current is saturated, it cannot go beyond that number, beyond that particular value, we call this as the saturation state of our transistor. Saturation. And I hope you can see that the saturation state is exactly opposite of the, the cutoff state. In the cutoff, the transistor is not conducting at all, and as a result, the output voltage is maximum. In the saturation state, the transistor is fully conducting. Can you see that? That's the maximum current you can ever get over here. And the output voltage, as a result, has become minimum. Transistor is saturated. So the key takeaway over here is that if you want your transistor to work as an amplifier, then our input current has to be within some range. That range is decided by many factors, like this number over here, the voltage supply that you have used, the resistors that you're going to use. We don't have to worry too much about that. That's going into the design and electronics, but it has to be within some range. And if you go beyond that range, we are asking for trouble because our transistor will either act like cutoff or saturation. Let's end with a curious question. You see, this cutoff region and the saturation region, do you think there's any use for that? I mean, they're not used for amplification, but can they be used for something else? I mean, if you look at this carefully, in the cutoff region, since there is no current flowing from here to here, even though there is a voltage difference, even though there is a voltage, it, it's as if the transistor is acting like an open switch, right? It's as if the transistor is open and that's why the current is not flowing. And in the saturation, since maximum current is flowing over here, and since there is no voltage drop across this, it's as if this transistor is acting like a short circuit, right? So can you think of any application for that?